I want to look at the result of all this. So we read the story, right? All these prophets of Baal, Elijah also invited the prophets of Ashura. They are going through their thing, man. They're going through their rituals. They're going through all their yelling and screaming and cutting and bleeding and, 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 and their pleas. And, and you know what? They were very zealous, weren't they? Can I just pause here and say, just because a person is zealous in what they believe doesn't mean that they are correct. Let me try this side. Just because somebody is very zealous about what they believe does not mean they're correct. Not at all. So they go through all their thing. Then Elijah says, cut the bull. That was a good sermon. <laughs> they prepare the bull. 950 to 1. He says, okay, got some water? Yeah. Dump water on it. Okay. Do it again. Remember that trench I had you dig around the altar? I had a reason for that. Do it again! And this altar and the bull is soaked. There's no way that if this is going to happen, there's no trick that's going to make this happen. Then Elijah prays that prayer that you just read in verse 37. And the result takes place, and fire comes down. Wow. Hey, don't you wish there were social media then? <laughs> Man. Fire comes down from heaven, burns the sacrifice, burns the stone altar, burns all the wood, obviously, and also evaporates the water that was in this deep trench from all the water that they poured. Can you, can you imagine, Elijah, Lord, do it! If he had a mic, he would have dropped it. <laughs> wow. But I want you to see what the, the real result was. The, the important result was not necessarily the fire. Can I say that without coming off blasphemous here? Okay, That wasn't the big result. Here's the big result. First of all, there was an awakening. Look at verse 39. When all the people saw this, they took a selfie. When they, no. <laughs> when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and they cried, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. There was an awakening. How many of you know if you're wavering between God's side and Baal's side, and Baal's side didn't do any, do any good, and then one guy called out to the Lord God and fire came down, woo, okay, that's going to shake you up. That's going to mess you up. And that's exactly why God does the things that he does, because he wants to make himself real to people that are wavering. He wants to wake people up. It's not just about the fire. Elijah didn't say, cool, I need to start fire ministries. That's not what he did. <laughs> we need t-shirts. No. As a result of this, the means, the method was the fire. The result was the awakening. And hear me, God will use whatever he can use to wake people 
up to realize that the only way to devote your life is towards Jesus Christ. He will use any means possible to do that. It may be fire. It may be circumstances. It may be your discomfort. It might be something else that takes place in your life. But understand when those fires fall in your life, God wants to get your attention and say, look towards me. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. And everything that you have put in his place is a cheap substitute. There was an awakening. Jonathan, if you can help me out, because finally there was also what I call an annihilation. Woo. Elijah did not say, wasn't that cool? All right. Good night, everybody. Drive safely. It's not what he did. Look at verse 40. Elijah commanded them, seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and... Not a good day for them. Slaughtered them there. Anything that could potentially take the place of the Lord God in your life has to be destroyed. No, I'm not suggesting, okay, I'm not suggesting that you find the nearest valley and your boyfriend and just wee, wee. <laughs> Pastor told me to do this. <laughs> it's not what Pastor told you to do. But could it be? Could it be that there needs to be a change in your schedule. Some of you almost think that's too flippant, but some of us keep on exposing ourselves to Baal. And God says, stop. Maybe that person at the Circle K, I think she's kind of cute. And that's why you go, because she gives you attention, even though you're married. And the Lord would say, I, I, I think you need to change your commute. Maybe the conversation that you've been having online, that you have no business having, because it's destructive. It's destructive to you. It could be destructive to your family. It could be destructive to your life. But you just need to cut that thing off. And see, here's the deal. I like the fact that they were slaughtered. I'm not weird. Well. But, but Elijah didn't say, no, no, no. No more bail. Elijah took care of that thing. He cut the head off that thing. If you're not ruthless with idols, they will be ruthless with you. If you're not ruthless with bail, Baal will be ruthless with you. So whose side are you on? God's way? Or some other way? And I think the Lord would, would talk to his people. He, he would look at a bunch of people that had been around in church for, some of you for years, and, and he would say, which, which way are you going to go? It, it's, it's time. It, it, it really is time because, folks, 
Turn on the news for 15 minutes today and tell me that Jesus isn't coming back soon. Okay, so the time's short. We don't have time to mess around. We don't have time to mess around. And so, so the Lord would say, whose side are you on? Not only come to my side, but stay on my side. Don't just come to my side on Sunday. You stay on my side on Monday. You stay on my side on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And whatever your plans are Friday night, you, you stay on my side. Whatever your plans are on Saturday night, you stay on my side. Because Baal will destroy you. And then the moment you want Baal, he won't be there. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Do things God's way.